All right, I wanna show you guys how to find the probability of a binomial random variable. And we're gonna be working on part E, but let's read what's going on. It says, a poll reported that 62% of adults were satisfied with the job the major airlines were doing. Suppose 25 adults are selected at random and the number who are satisfied is recorded. Okay, so let's do part E. It says, would it be unusual to find more than 22 who are satisfied with the job the major airlines are doing. All right, so what's going on here? Unusual, we know that. We need to check if the probability is less than 0 0.05, right? But what we have here is more than 22. So we gotta think about that. First of all, X is a random variable. And what does that stand for? The number of the 25 adults that are satisfied right because there are 25 adults that they ask the question are you satisfied notice that it's binomial right because first of all we have a fixed number of trials we have 25 people that they asked also we have a constant probability of 0 0.62 because 62 percent are satisfied with the job the major airlines are doing and it's binomial so we can say that X is a binomial random variable standing for the number of the 25 adults that are satisfied. So one thing that you need to realize is that X can take on some values. Wow. It can take on zero to 25, because zero people can be satisfied with the airlines or 25, all of them could be satisfied. So that's important to realize that this random variable takes on numerical values. Now, what is more than 22? So more than 22 is this. Does it include 22 or does it start at 23? You gotta, you gotta pay attention to what more than means. So more than 22 means 23, 24, and 25. Now, binome CDF what it does is it takes the values from zero up to a number, right? So binome CDF, you're gonna plug in N, P, and then X, and then it's gonna go, and it's gonna take on the values from zero, one, two, all the way up to X. So binome CDF only works like that, right? It only goes from zero and up, it's cumulative, right? So we have to use the complement idea. So we're gonna take these values here from zero to 22. We need to realize that that is the complement of what we're trying to find. So therefore, the probability that X is greater than 22 is what we're trying to find. This is equal to one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to 22, right? starting at 22, from zero to 22. But this is exactly what binome CDF is. So it's going less than 22, so we would plug in 22. So we would say one minus binome CDF 25.62 and 22. And that should give us our answer. So one minus Second distribution, binome CDF, 25, comma, 0.62, comma, 22. And we get that complicated number, which is not 8.32, because there's an E and a negative 4. So it's scientific notation. So this is 0 0.000830s, basically. So that's how we get this number. So the result is unusual because that probability is less than 0 0.05, right? Now, if we did this 100 times in 100 random samples of 25 adults, this result is expected about 0 0.0833. Just multiply this by 100 because this is the probability that it will happen once. So if you do it 100 times, just multiply that times 100 because after all, the mean of a binomial random variable is n times p. So 100 is the sample size in this case. So you're gonna get 0 0.0833 if we add another three on that. So that's how we get this probability right there. Or that's actually less than one time, right? That probability is so low that it's gonna happen 0 0.0833 times. So less than one time. 
right? That's not a probability. That is an average. So that's really low. So it's rarely gonna happen. All right, that's it. And that's the way they know what to be trapped to send you give us right so we could win. If I walk up a highest mountain, ride a beam of light to a distant galaxy, falling quick, and get lost on two.